kind of like a uh, set, the uh -huh. God set, but it's longer. I might write this down. Okay. By the way. Uh, something about water. And then there's a name that looks fairly Egyptian, but you've not seen it before. It's also hard to make out. And then it says wisdom again. Weird stuff. One o'clock and we nailed. And he, he didn't look too far away. Okay, I guess uh, I'll just start mumbling some stuff I'm reading. What do I say? Sure. Do that one. Yeah. All right. I'll just read a couple chapters. Let's a couple little bits here, okay? Uh, paraphrasing it to you. All right. There's a group of friends very playfully calling themselves the Dark Brotherhood, and they all thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Held their first meeting in the early spring of 1881. Rupert Merriweather became the recording secretary. The members included six. The members numbered six, including Marion Allen, the founder and their nominal leader. In June of 1881, they purchased an old farmhouse outside Ross's Corners, a place where they can conduct their experiments in privacy. Representing themselves as a student, a uh, literary fraternity, they cleaned and furnished the place while Marion Allen carved the special warding protective signs over the wooden doors and windows. At the time, the others weren't used as such precautions. That's all for now. We can head over to the uh, county courthouse, find out how old this house is, see what the same things been going on there since. I guess that uh, remark of uh, Mary, Mary and Allen, I'll just say something like, uh, well, he was one of the members. Hmm. <laughs> you agree, get alcohol for sure. I'm playing a male character, guys. Nobody seems to remember that. Right. It just seems that you guys have a date. I'm also no. British, so. I'm not, I'm just going to keep reading. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable well, mumbling stuff. You know, I'm going to say some stuff and people die. Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens when we get there. Is anybody going to leave while he reads, or are you guys going to study the book together? Oh, I'm... I'm... It's my library, so I'm staying, and I'm drinking, and I'm pondering the box quite a lot. Okay. And the connection between the members, the man who had his tongue cut out, and... I'll offer you to check out the history of this place. I want to know what I'm getting into. I don't want that. What was your last name again? Washington. Mr. Washington, if you don't mind returning here tomorrow evening, we'll discuss a plan of action. Does that give you enough time to uh, check things out? It does, but I still like to sell my soul tomorrow. I, uh, this newspaper clipping, I'm gonna word, you mentioned Mary and Allen at 20 minutes. That's the beginning, I guess. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more. I'm gonna read a couple more for you. It's actually quite good. All right. The, a series of experiments, innocent and apparently ineffective, attempts to contact the spirit world are detailed from time to time. And there is an entry dated February of 1882 that notes Marion Allen's acquisition of an artifact, reportedly Egyptian, described as a small sarcophagus of gold with a hinged lid. Inside was a larger piece of amber that trapped the specimen of some unknown species of anthropod. Alan's very excited. The box corresponds to a description he found in an ordinary reference volume in the Miskatonic University Library. Yeah, I will, as I read that about the Egyptian sarcophagus, I'll say it kind of louder so that attention is brought to it. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'll continue reading. Okay. Well, I'll let, since you... I have access to the libraries at Miskatonic. We may want to go and see if that book is still there. They're open evenings. Week evenings. Yeah, we don't even probably have to meet up tomorrow evening. I mean, we can meet up this evening. If it's just one time over, it's not the deal. You can, uh, you can check out. I'm, going to, I'm yeah. going to pull out my sketchbook and rip a strip of paper and put up with Mark that thing about the Egyptian surprises. Are you just sitting there drinking my alcohol? Why not? You do it all the time. Oh, no, you can. You're welcome to. 
I wouldn't even notice you, yes, but I mean, this this you gotta thing. You take the book with you? I'm pouring myself into this book, so you're going to have to like, get my attention if you want me to do it. Oh, no, you're fine. As long as you keep reading from time to time, I'll sit there and listen. I'll, yeah. I may go and like check gonna, some other books and see if there's references to small hinged sarcophagi, which I don't think that's very common. <laughs> Well, I'm going to library school, too. You're going over to the... Anybody else going to the library? Are you going now? I'm going to the courthouse first. Right there. I'll go to the courthouse with him, you know, legal I'm good with. I assume there's not... Since he's got the car. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get back. When you guys get back, we'll go over the rest of the book. Alright. I'm just going to continue reading. Yeah, okay. if you're just going to sit here and read... Um, Basically, just checking on the PBA office, see what they know about the house, the, the general public stats. The best you can, local. the best you can find out about it. Um, do you have any rec any skill, any requisite researching skill, for library use? You're not going to want to. Um, I do use like one house. <laughs> I do use law to find out about the nature of everything. Um, that's fair. Make a law check. Uh, All right. right. Do you have it? Yes. Okay. That was nice. Yeah. I don't know if I'm walking <laughs> Yeah. How, oh, the, the wow. hey, how does the skills work? You have to roll under. Yeah, roll yeah. under. It's basically that's that's your percentage. So if you roll within that percent, but it gives you this percent. So how many ranks you get back times? Plus. That's not ranks. Or I'm not. You may not have done that right. Okay. 